Oh. This time on Low Boost, I fixed a timing cover leak on my C5 Corvette the only way that I know how to, and that's by upgrading the camshaft. Before we get started, I wanted to cover a couple of different things. I'm gonna be breaking up this series into like a four or five part series, starting off with the tear down, which is what we're gonna to do today. Then also putting the cam in, uh, putting the heads on, putting the whole car back together, and then a totally separate video of the car being dyno tuned and being fully functional for driving on the track. So make sure you guys stick around for all that stuff. Hit the subscribe button, cause there's a lot of stuff and I'm gonna go into a lot of detail when I do this, so make sure you guys stick around for all that stuff. It's about time for me to upgrade the cam on this car and I can't wait to do so. I've partnered with Cam Motion and we spent a lot of time together putting together the perfect track cam for my C5 Corvette track car. It's designed to make a ton of power between 3500 and 5500 RPM, which is where I find myself most often on track, but it'll still be able to wind out to 6500 RPM as well. So I'm not gonna get as much horsepower increase over 6,000 RPM as I would on like a stage three or stage four cam, but I'm gonna get a lot more torque and power down low where I'm using it the most coming out of turn. Let's get started on the teardown. If you're interested in this cam, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description below. You guys could buy one today. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery terminal. Take this puppy out. The alternator bolt back here is 13 millimeter. This is 15 millimeters and the one at the bottom is 15 millimeters. I just loosened that up enough so I can slip off the belt and that's 15 millimeters. What's going on that thing? Hand flop. Not now, got this to take care. I use a 15 millimeter socket, not a wrench to get this off. And then you just slip it off that way. And you pull the, when you pull the belt actually off, it'll rest right on the socket. If you use a wrench, it's gonna stay stuck there. So that's how we get that off and now we can take you off the air. So I undid the injectors, unplugged all the harnesses and moved the injectors out of the way so my fuel system's still intact. I don't wanna leak fuel anywhere. That'll be the easiest way to do it. Um, next, I'm gonna take off the intake. Now I'm not replacing this with a different intake. Don't listen to any Z06 fanboy Homer tell you, oh, Z06 is the one. It's not really the one you want. 2001 up, every Corvette got an LS6 intake. The only difference, internals, pistons, connecting rods, the only difference between an LS1 and an LS6 from 2001 to 2004 is the cam and the heads. We're changing those things out to LS6 heads that are milled and a better cam than an LS6 cam. So this will be better than a Z06 Corvette for a lot less money. So if you're gonna buy a Corvette, the ones you want are 2001 to 2004. If you find one that's not a Z06, it's okay. I had problems with this in the past. I couldn't get this off to save my life. So I just disconnected it straight from the brake booster. I think I did that the last time. Here's our LS6 intake manifold. Oh, gotta disconnect one more thing. <laughs> Crack off the pet cock, that's the name of it. And the fan should pull out relative ease. So under this as we get to it, you could see almost like a line where oil is coming from. So that's why I really think it's a timing cover. We'll see more as we get it to go off. I think I'm gonna remove the sway bar next and then we'll tackle the steering rack. Nobody loves to do that, I hate it. I probably my least favorite thing about doing these cars. Thankfully this one's held up though, since I did the turn one steering rack. Do it off camera, but the hood is off. So now intake manifolds off, radiators out, fans out. I'm gonna try to move the shroud out or over, move this around somewhere. And I think I'm gonna take the water pump off next. It's everywhere. Ugh. I mean, a lot of this is wet from the coolant, but you could see all this cake stuff here. I don't know if that's just from miles, but it's always wet right here. The front main seal just keeps on splattering oil like that, and that's why it got that way. It shouldn't be like that. It's pretty bad. Let me know what you guys think. So normally this is hard to show, but since I have everything out of the way, pretty easy. So obviously you want to, you got to take these off here, right? Normally it's an 18 millimeter 
But if you use a crow's foot, not only does it come off, it's a lot easier to do it. Now, obviously everything's out of the way and I could have just used a regular wrench, but if you're just doing the rack without doing anything else, this kind of stuff in tight quarters is perfect. Get yourself a crow's foot set. I'll put a link to mine in the description below. Took the water pump out, took the steering rack out, took the sway bar out to do the steering rack. Once the sway bar comes out, it's easier with the water pump out. I slid the rack over here, turned it a couple times, and it slides out this way. Um, I've made like five videos on that, so I figured I wouldn't show that on camera. But what I am gonna show on camera is getting to the harmonic balancer bolt. If you've ever done this before, you know it's a pain in the butt. You need an Ugga Dugga machine. Just, just go out and get one. If you've gotten to this point, go buy an Ugga Dugga. I'm gonna put the car in first gear and uh, e-brake on and turn that some bitch. When I say Ugga Dugga machine, I mean impact gun. You wanna get one that's gonna be heavy duty. This thing is like 600 foot pounds um, and this will take off everything. But you put this sucker on, 24 millimeter. Comes right off. I mean, that would have taken you an hour or two. And if you have an impact on, that was 10 seconds. Now we're gonna take off the harmonic balancer. Let's go. Oh, all right, maybe we need a better one. That popped off. I hit it with a little PB blaster this time and uh, it came off without breaking another puller. That one was probably cheap, maybe a Harbor Freight one. This one I think I got at AutoZone. So it worked a little better. Ta-da! I feel like this is the original harmonic balancer. You can see that it was definitely time to do it anyway. What you can do is a good trick. If you think your balancer is going, take a bar of soap or something and draw a line. If you ever see those lines fall off each other, you know it's slipping. Uh, judging by the condition of this, it probably was. We're gonna get a nice new one from Summit Racing and uh, we'll do that when we put it back together, but I just wanted to show you guys what the original one looked like. People are usually interested in that kind of stuff. So, OEM one, toast. Maybe make it a kayak anchor or something. See how it looks. Good as new. The reason we LS swap everything, folks. Uh, so next up, we're gonna take off the rockers. Once that comes off, we can take out the push rod and then uh, start to unbolt the heads. All right. Make sure to remember which side is which because I want to keep everything consistent. Next up, we're taking the head bolts off. The top ones here are easy to come off with the electric ratchet, but I did have to use a breaker bar to take off the big head bolts that are in the middle. I don't like using an impact gun for this. I know I can do it by hand and I just would rather not break stuff off. Not that I think that I would. This clip here, you gotta get off. I just used some screwdriver and some wire clips and that came right off, so. The passenger side looks pretty good. Obviously gonna clean it up before I put the head gaskets on, but they look pretty good. Uh, next, we're gonna take the other head off. I'm gonna take the lifter trays out and the lifters next, because we got all new lifters. Four cans of brake cleaner and a few brain cells later, uh, this, I can actually see the subframe. I didn't even touch the timing cover with brake clean because I, I got a whole new one coming. So we're, we're gonna just not even bother touching that. But both heads are off. All right, now that we got the thing torn down to where we gotta take the old cam out, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button because we're gonna do that in the next episode. In the meantime, check out these videos that I already have ready to go.